welcome back. My name is Habiba and welcome to Kenton and Habiba. Today I'm going to be telling you about my experience going to medical school or getting into medical school. I hope you watched my last video uh, on my immigrant experience and leaving Nigeria because that would be helpful to give you some background about who I am or how I got here. So um, I thought before I tell you again about getting into medical school that I would give you some insight um, as to how I decided on medicine. So when I used to live in Nigeria, um, I used to get sick often. I used to get sick either because I had malaria yeah. tests and they couldn't find anything wrong, but I continued to have chest pain. Um, now when I look back, it clearly was just anxiety. You know, here I was a child with a lot of anxiety. So anyway, there was a time where my mom was away and I think I was having one of those periods where I was having chest pain and anxiety frequently and I told my grandparents, my African grandparents, um, that this was going on. Um, I had mentioned it, um, you know, maybe I mentioned it more than one or two times, I don't remember, but they knew that, you know, this was something that was bothering me. So uh, one day I remember us coming back from school. Again, my parents were not in town and I was with my grandparents and, you know, they thought they were doing the right thing. This is um, my relatives. They thought they were doing the right thing. They did what they thought was right. Uh, and so I remember coming back from school. I probably was about 10, 11. And um, one of my cousins telling me this is after getting back from school. You know, we, we used to wear uniforms. So she told me to go and change and put on a wrapper. Basically, you know, African cloth to cover up. Um, we were going somewhere. So I didn't think anything. I didn't know what was going on. So, you know, I changed as she asked and we uh, had to go walk somewhere. So it was me and my cousin and we walked to this area. Um, it was somewhat remote. I could tell we were moving away from the city. Um, and I remember uh, a man um, who I clearly realized was what I would say was a traditional doctor or in my mind, you know, almost like a witch doctor. And the treatment that was planned was to basically um, do some cuts on my chest, do some cuts and suction out the blood because uh, back then, traditional doctors believed if you were having pain, you needed to have the blood from that area suctioned out and the pain would go away. So I, knowing differently and knowing and having an understanding of Western medicine, uh, was terrified. I refused. I absolutely refused. I knew I would get in trouble with my African um, or Nigerian grandparents, but I just absolutely refused to do it. So I remember crying and getting up to leave. I was just not going to do this. I was not going to get cut. I was not going to partake in this ritual or treatment. And so we left. Anyway, so when I think of medicine as a child, for me, it just conjured up scary images. You know, it always felt like something painful and something right, that so I needed fast to fast forward to Cornell. So at Cornell, I took tons of classes, like I said. I was pre-med, but I also was an independent major in black theater. And um, I was a resident advisor. I really loved being a resident advisor. I was a student advisor. I basically did a lot of leadership positions. I was in the Cornell African Students Association. I had a ball at Cornell. And so, you know, I knew I was going to go to medical school, but by the time I was ready to graduate Cornell, I realized that unlike many of my peers, uh, I was not ready to take the MCAT. So I basically decided that I was going to take what people would say is a gap year. Uh, that's what I decided to do. Uh, I graduated Cornell and then 
it would it became you know what next you know what was i going to do to remain in school but not actually not actually go to medical school so i had applied while i was in college um i had applied to different programs uh i was given the option to consider doing a post back program so i applied to upenn they had a post back program and i also applied to columbia university um which is in new york city um at the time remember my mom now lives in new york city um and so are my brothers so my family you know uh was in new york city except my father was still in africa or still in nigeria so uh i got into columbia uh post back program which as any of you know is a great program great school another ivy league but i chose not to go because i wanted to be able to go far away from home i guess at that point i felt that i had been sheltered most of my life um i had graduated college and i really wanted to go explore you know explore the country so i knew that if i had gone to columbia post back i probably would end up living at home with my mom which she would have loved but at that point i now had a boyfriend and i wanted to go see the rest of the country so instead i had also applied to a summer program which felt a little risky at the time because i could have stayed home and gone to this you know amazing college right there uh or go to a summer program across the country and that's what I decided to do. So UCLA um had a program called UCLA Prep and uh they offered uh students of color an opportunity to take classes to kind of help prepare them to take the MCAT and also help prepare them to get into medical school. So it was a great opportunity. So I took it and went across the country to UCLA and met an amazing group of kids uh who all wanted to go to into medicine they were all from different parts of the country of course most of them were from los angeles um so after uh while i was there actually while i was there i met an amazing woman uh initially at the program i actually stayed in her house she was emergency room doctor uh Dr. Ricketts and she became my mentor or one of you know she was my mentor and a ton of other kids that she was mentoring so me and a few other girls stayed at her house while we attended the program so we would go to the program come back and we would have a place to live and um we would also you know review our material with her she was just an amazing mentor and what's great is that i still keep in contact with her now so over 20 years later we still stay in contact i've been to her house a few times since then she has met my kids you know it's it's just amazing to me um who you meet along the way and how it's so important to uh not you know not what do i say destroy bridges because you don't know the relationships that you make as a young person or as you're coming along how important they're going to be later in life So anyway, after UCLA prep, um I ended up enrolling in a uh biology master's program. And you know, to be honest, I don't think I was really that interested in having a biology master's. It was just an opportunity to bridge, you know, the time that I would uh take, you know, graduate courses and get into medical school. So again for me, Uh, I didn't necessarily do the traditional straight from college directly to medical school. I felt that I was not ready for medical school and so in order to, you know, improve my application in order to uh get more graduate level classes even though I had had all the pre-med classes, I felt like my application would be stronger if I had biochem classes because I had not taken biochem while I was in college. So uh while pursuing this biology masters program i ended up taking biochem or a lot of higher level chemistry classes you know classes that i thought would be helpful 
So while I was doing that, living in California, um, working and going to school at the same time, uh, we had the uh, Northridge Air earthquake. Many of you watching this probably were too young or not even born, born, but in 1994, there was a major earthquake in California and the building I was staying got destroyed, a number of buildings, schools. Uh, I mean, there was a lot, tons of damage and I lost the apartment that I was staying in. I basically could not live there because it became too dangerous to live there. A lot of the buildings were condemned. So I ended up living with a friend briefly. So it became a very tumultuous time in my life, scary uh, time where I'm across the country. Uh, I don't have a stable place to live. Um, and I was too prideful to, you know, go back home or ask my mom for help. I really didn't want her to know how difficult life was. Uh, I remember things like, you know, going home and not having any food in the fridge, having a potato and ketchup literally in the fridge. Um, Kenton, my boyfriend at the time or fiance really, uh, was in the military. So he had gone to he had gone to military college before I met him at Cornell. And so he had some military ob obligations. So he really wasn't there all the time to kind of protect me and be there all the time. He was most of the time at that point in Georgia. So it was a very scary time for me, but I think I did most of my growing up there because it's one of those sink or swim type of situations. You're gonna figure out how to pay bills. You're gonna figure out how to eat. You're gonna figure out how to stay in school because I realized that I didn't want to drop out of school completely. I always felt that it was important to keep me in that academic mindset, even if I wasn't in med school. So stay in school and that way your mind was always ready to pick up a book and stay in that mindset, but also not having to pay back student loans. If you were at least part-time, you didn't have to start paying back the student loans you had accrued back in college. So this is what I was doing. And so it was challenging to maintain my grades. And I remember at one point, uh, my biochem teacher asking me what I wanted to do and I told him I wanted to be a doctor I was going to go to medical school and I remember him looking at me in front of the class um, I was one of the few you know students of color and in front of the class he put his hands down and basically began doing this and telling me you're going down I don't see that happening. You're not going to medical school. And you know, this would not be the first time someone would say something negative or try to put me down or try to discourage me from medical school. Uh, this would definitely not be the first or last time. And uh, I, I, of course I was hurt. I was discouraged, uh, but you know what? It turns out I found out years later that this guy was a twin and his twin brother had ended up in medical school and he didn't. So of course he was walking around with a chip on his shoulder and it felt good for him to put someone like me down. So anyway, eventually, eventually I took the MCAT. Eventually I got into med school. Hooray! <laughs> But let me tell you, that was like going from the frying pan into the fire, okay? Because medical school was a whole different animal. If you think you have seen and studied material before, you have never seen more material than the kind of material you will see in medical school. Right so after I started medical school, um, this was in Charleston and I didn't really tell you that yeah I had interviewed in a lot of schools up north and I decided to go to MUSC because I really loved the uh, southern hospitality they were so gracious to me um, I had been living in California at that time and so 
you know, uh, going to the South was just completely different. I love the architecture, the old world feel. Everyone was super friendly and gracious and they really welcomed me with open arms. So I remember calling Kenton um, and saying, Kenton, guess what? We're going to Charleston. And he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, we're going to Charleston because that's where I'm going for medical school. So it was just one extreme to the other. I'd been living in California at that point and then decided to go down south. And uh, it was a great school, a huge school. They have a great nursing program, a great pharmacy school, a great podiatry school, and of course the medical school and a graduate program. I mean, it was just a huge campus. And um, some of my friends from medical school I still have now. So anyway, this is me after graduating. And believe it or not, I was actually pregnant in that picture. I had one kid and I was pregnant in that picture. Um, and this is me also with my friend. Of course, I'm covering up her face because it's not like she gave me permission to show her face on here. So anyway, yeah, that's me, med school.